Hey guys, strap yourself in for a wild ride. I am starting this one and a half hour long video with picking and buying towels. This started off as just a moving out vlog and turned into something quite a bit more sinister, unfortunately, but it's a roller coaster. If you'd like to join, strap yourself in. If you'd like to skip all of this stuff, I will have chapter markers in the description, basically for the moving out portion and then the Reese portion, because that is kind of the main part of this video. Ordered some new plates from Maya because I had a big sale going on. They're a heritage style. I went looking at all these different designs and nothing really stood out to me, but these are just simple and white. They're a really nice shape. They're very much old person plates, but in a nice way. Oh, is this so cute? Oh, I love them. How nice would that look? With some food on, with a little scone. <laughs> it was a huge sale and everything was like 50, 60% off. So I thought, I'm just excited to have plates that are flat because the ones that we have now are from like Big W or something and they're really uneven. $9.99, they're like four or $5 each. Side plates. Do you hate it as much as you thought you would? <laughs> what? Yes. Yeah, if it's got like flowers and embroidery on them, this is just clean, crisp white. No, it no, it's not. Imagine, it's just, it's just going to suit our nice mu the marble table. It's going to look like modern in the, in the space of our house. Yes, it is. Do you want me to return it's them? Heritage. You can't just <laughs> heritage, but it'll look modern. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a modern heritage. Yeah. Do you want me to return them? No. Are you gonna whinge about them in the future? Yep. <laughs> Out of ten, realistically, how much do you hate them? Ten being hate. Yeah. How much do you actually hate them? Six. Oh, six isn't too bad. Yeah. Oh, you start creeping it up to higher. He says he hates them six out of ten. Ten being hates a lot. So I'll take it. My mum doesn't like them either. <laughs> when I showed her a photo, she was like, because <laughs> they remind her of old people too. So I'm the only person that likes them apparently, but hey. <laughs> this is just a PSA. Do not buy black theatre paint from Bunnings. If you breathe on it the wrong way, it will leave a mark. It was the biggest waste of money. We wish we just went with black paint. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> we had to buy our own green bin and seeing Reese just carting <laughs> a wheelie bin around Bunnings made me laugh. <laughs> 11th of May. We are in the middle of packing all of our stuff up and I was going to say this to Reese privately, but I want to document this moment. We have finally gotten to the point where we are actually leaving. Nothing like, yet. this Thanks has taken in. so long and has been so anxiety inducing and stressful and bloody horrible for so long. We've had these boxes in the spare room for so long and now bringing them out. And all the stuff that was written on them was when we moved out of our last house. And the kind of depressing feeling we had when we were moving into this one. Like, it was exciting because our house was being built, but then it's just like, oh, this really isn't our house. To now open them up again, seeing what was written on them, remembering that whole process. Just, I can't believe, like, after all of this. When did we sign the contracts? We signed the contracts December 2020. We started speaking to them in August of 2020. We started speaking to them in August of 2020, so like designing the house. So it literally has been basically three years at this point. I just can't believe that I've got boxes. And it's just so weird. Like it's such a good feeling, but it just feels so... I think just because I'm thinking back to when we were taking all that stuff off that truck it just stresses me out thinking, like, imagine if there was a glitch in the Matrix and time rewound to three years ago and our brains were still the same and had experienced everything the same, but time went back three years. How terrifying would that have been to do? Just to, I just hate thinking about the past two and a half years. 
not that life in general was so bad. It's just like normally with life, you tend to look back and think about the good times. I feel like I've just been thinking about the bad times because of how stressful the last few months have been. So surreal. I can't believe I'm moving out of this place. You excited? Not yet, because we've got a big day tomorrow. Don't judge me, Grouch. What the hell? No, I don't. You guys do. I'm up for this. It's going to be just as stressful for you, unfortunately. Yeah, poor baby. Anyway, Starlink was installed today. That took longer than it should have. Gas bottles were installed, so we've got hot water. So yeah, now we can move in basically, officially, because I've got internet for work and we've got gas for showers. And we also bought a washing machine. <sighs> it was good. <laughs> I posted that we found this green marble table on Marketplace. It was a great find, but I tried to buff out some of the scratches. And that ended up not being the right way to do it. So then we had to hire someone to do it professionally. And that still didn't, it still looks different than it did when we first got it. Like it doesn't have that gloss to it. It's also incredibly, like, obviously heavy. So we had to pay someone to pick it up from Perth, bring it here. And we're paying them again <laughs> to bring it from here, the shed, into the house. Because it's just so heavy. So although it was kind of a good find, it has become... Probably more expensive than it was worth. But you know what? You live and learn. And it is a nice table, and I'm sure in time we'll forget. <laughs> and it is also a little bit annoying that the top and the bottom are different stones. But our sniffer dog just making sure everything is safe to use. Right, but done. They did a great job. Didn't make it easy for them. Entrance is hard to get into and they were really struggling with the top But that was Worth every penny so that we don't have to stress over it And now the hardest thing to move is inside And now we are going to get a moving truck and move all of our stuff into That and then bring it back and unload and Yeah, start unpacking everything and then next week or even this weekend we'll start cleaning the house as much as we can and then this weekend we'll be spending it cleaning the rental i remember this night was just so depressing it was so late we had to have dominoes for dinner which i do love but the mood the vibes were just not there <laughs> this has got to be the worst of it surely because this is killing us <laughs> This is just Mia spinning around. Someone once asked if there's something wrong with her. There's not. She only does this when she's in her like explorer mode. She normally doesn't walk and spin like this. It I don't it's like a special set of circumstances where she'll whip out the little adventure mode spin every few steps. It's really cute though. She has really done well with the house and I think it does help. Uh, that she's been here, but have been exposed to it for so many years now. Well, what, like two and a half years. So she's familiar enough with it that she knows that it's kind of her place, but it's still fun for her to explore because, you know, new furniture's going in, there's new flooring. It's just cute to watch. So it's about seven. We've done two trips. This is the second trip. We just <coughs> were up this morning loading up the rental truck thing high truck and then dropped all that off while we were doing that the um satellite guy was installing tv antenna so we have obviously tv now and that took up until about three got home continued packing everything this was like the biggest stuff like my makeup drawers which is so heavy and i've now survived two moves which is crazy considering it's just ikea stuff we just got pizza for dinner because everything's in boxes we're at that, that weird stage now where it's like Basically everything is packed up, so we don't really, I think, yeah, we'll just sleep in our rental tonight and then we'll just take all the stuff out of the truck. It's pitch black, so it's going to be fun trying to get it out of the truck. But obviously we, well, we have to return the truck the, the truck tomorrow morning. I've got so much rubbish from all of the IKEA stuff and all of the furniture we bought. It's insane, so it's actually quite handy that we have the truck. We just pop it all in there and take it to the tip. In the morning, there's just a lot to do, obviously. It's just, this is the worst part. This is worse than actually like packing and stuff. It's just the, all the back and forth and anyway, it's just the worst. But as a reason I'm saying this, once you've done this, 
This is literally like today, right now, is the worst it'll be. And we'll quit cleaning the rental tomorrow. It is weird not having any blinds and stuff. I kind of hate that, but <laughs> we haven't gotten around to ordering those. And even still, it'll probably take a month. So I was saying to Reese, like, it's so nice having a TV. Obviously, that's not <laughs> that's not the TV we're gonna put there. That's for our bedroom. But it's just so nice having background music, and it just feels like company. Like when I first moved to to Sydney on my own. Having a TV just made such a difference. We're still waiting for the builder to do... <laughs> what aren't we waiting for them to do? I absolutely, unequivocally, never building with a project builder again. With a new house, you expect it to be new. Like when you buy a new car, you you don't want imperfections and dents and scratches and stuff. And like, it, it, it's, it's a new car. You're paying a premium for it. Same thing with a house, but there's so much that we're like... Is that like scuffs and marks and dings and doors not opening properly? Like so much just sloppy work. We are off to unload the truck. Send help. We just got home. It's like 9 p.m. Oh my God, I hate this process so much. But this is the worst of it. Taking all of the rubbish to the tip now, 7.30, and then we'll start cleaning the rental. It's our first night, look at the state of me. <sighs> it's funny, I had a dream, look at our makeshift blinds, one of them see-through basically, so it defeats the purpose, but <sighs> I literally had a dream about this night, and I was like, oh my story is like this. <clears throat> Hey guys, guess what? We're moving in. It's our first night. And it was so exciting. And the reality of it is, not that. Like, deep in my brain, obviously, I know it's exciting, but it's just been so stressful. Such long days every day. You're waking up. Oh yeah, our bed is missing a crucial part, so we're sleeping on a mattress for now. It's just like, the days are so long. I try to be really mindful of Mia so that she's not stressed out. She's been pretty, she's been amazing actually. Physical stuff all day, cleaning today. It's just so exhausting. And at night time, it's just scary because it's like, as much as it's your house, it's unfamiliar. Like, it's not unfamiliar, but it's just not what you're used to. You know, even though that rental was not our house and we were happy to get out of there, it still feels comfort comfortable because you're used to it. It's familiar. Like, you know where everything is. Everything's t tucked away. It's just been your home for the past, like, two and a half years or it just hasn't been. It just feels weird to be here. I remember this feeling when we lived, when we bought our first house. It was a two-story house and it was, like, modern and nice and it just felt so cold and empty the first night we were there. It was really eerie. I think it was at night time. It just feels really creepy. <laughs> anyway, so where are we at now? Basically, like... 99% of our stuff is here and uh, the rental we've done most of the cleaning we've just got to mop clean some bench tops some drawers and that's pretty much it this is the state of everything isn't it memes hey. just a little <laughs> tiny TV. God, how scary is this? You can't see anything. Ooh. All my filming stuff. Well, not all of it, but most of it. You're a good girl. I'm so proud of her. That's the benefit of us being here, like visiting so many times, is that she knows the house. She was in a bit better spirits yesterday, but she's a very, very brave girl, hey? I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you, memes. I'm so proud of you. You're such a brave girl. I'm so proud of you, darling. Yes, I know you love me. I love you lots. That's going to be the bed coverings, memes. Oh, I've got spins going. You're excited. Yeah, that's my girl. God, I'm so excited to have blinds. Oh my god, it, like second to having a TV, having blinds and being able to close your home up it makes it feel like a fort. Whereas right now it feels like a museum that anyone can look into. 
what's in here? The TV, a little blinds, Mimi's steps, although she loves she loves this room. It's a little safe room now, which is good. Dismantled bed. And then everything else. Ugh, man, this is so stressful. I can't wait till I look back at this video and it's all done. Our new linen bed sheets. We've never had linen before, which is nice. So expensive though. Is it worth it? Not sure. <laughs> Update. It is the next morning. My sleep was actually surprisingly fine. The bed was pretty comfy, actually. And um, the size being a little bit smaller than usual wasn't actually an issue. The linen was really nice to sleep on though. Had just really vivid dreams like I always do. So I woke up pretty tired and I just got overwhelmed last night and I had a little cry. It's about lunchtime now, one or, I think it's about 1 p.m. and the house is pretty much clean. Pretty much all done at this point, which is, I mean, I'm just so glad we're over the hardest part. Like, let me show you how it's looking. Still got some stuff that needs to go, but this is basically how it looked when we moved in. So, random other bits and pieces. So yes, everything has been cleaned top to bottom. I'm so over this. This has been, this was definitely, this feels a lot worse than um, when we sold our house. I don't know why. I thought we'd have way less stuff. I'm still in the mindset that we don't have as much as we did the first time, but Reese is sure we have more. I don't know how that's possible because I had a lot of stuff at the first house and we cleared through so much stuff before we came here. And then when we came here, like two or three times, we cleared through stuff. So I don't know how we could have accumulated more than we did at the start. I don't know. We thought it would be a fairly straightforward move, but it has not been. It's been emotionally, more so than anything, emotionally exhausting. Like, Reese and I are both on our last nerve, even with each other. Like, it's just not fun. I don't know how, like, and I was thinking, <laughs> I was thinking, is this what it's like to have children and to be constantly stressed about something and to take it out on each other because you're like the closest person you're the only person to, to, to take it out on other than I guess your kids or Mia, but you wouldn't obviously do that I'm so glad it's Sunday and tomorrow is going to be a fresh week Because this week has been evil possessed <laughs> Dramatic. It's just been horrible. Honestly, honestly horrible. Anyway, I always feel bad about coming on here and being like Wah! But and I felt so negative in that last house video that I did but everyone was like thanks for being honest because you don't have to see people being honest so here's some more honesty for you some depressing honesty anyway we're getting there and I'm proud of both of us and memes so uh, here's a little tour this was our little storage area this is just all of their stuff and their paintings should I put it wide view yeah that's a bit better let's go this way first this was a spare bedroom that we never used, except for when my family came over like once a year, basically. There's my snizzy angel. This is the spare bathroom. This is the laundry. I should put that toilet seat down. Yep, linen cupboard, in here is, this was like a little office space for Reese, didn't really use it much, but kind of just storage, basically, and this is the makeup room, this was the room that you all saw. Yep, that is it. I know memes used to be a big rug here. Main living area. This little random spot. Kitchen. This is our bedroom. We're still gonna take his clothes out. My little closet space. Bathroom.
bathroom. We tried everything to get that calcium build up off, but it was there also when we moved in. So we can only do so much, but he at least did a good job. Sayonara to this house. I just realized I started lounge base in here. I didn't start it, I've been working on it. I think it was the 2018 or 2019 that I started working on it, but you know, it launched here. So that's kind of special. You know what I'm excited to do? Wash my hair, put some makeup on, maybe even fake tan if I feel like it. I've also been dying to go back to those group fitness classes that I, or the one that I did, and then I was literally like unable to move any limb, any part of my body for a week. So I thought I can't go the week that we're moving because I need to be able to like lift and move and I couldn't even sit on the toilet seat properly. So I'm excited to be able to get back into that when my routine's back to normal. So it is, I think it's like 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Look how nice it looks. I mean, just breathe gear down there. <laughs> Got home tonight and just cleaned as much as we could, that was lovely dinner stuff, but put as much away as we could. I mean, it's still stuff, but at least we've got like, got food in the cupboard now. Still need to go to a food shop, but we've got food in the fridge. Even having stuff in the mudroom, like just our stuff. <sighs> Feeling so much better today. Just unboxing all of plates and stuff at the moment. The sunrises here are no joke. They're absolutely beautiful. Morning number two. I have no other clothes, so I'm just wearing active wear. <laughs> Look at that beautiful sunrise. Pretty good sleep. Just feeling a lot more settled now, which is nice. The worst of it's definitely over. It's just lots of little small things that make it feel more homely, like water pressure is amazing. I was kind of worried it wasn't going to be. Wasn't sure if our shower was going to be good for like fit for purpose, because it's one of those long skinny ones. And it was amazing. It is amazing. Wasn't sure about how our rainwater would taste. Tastes amazing. What else? Floorboards are really nice to walk on. They're nice and almost they're not warm, but we're so used to tiles, so that's such a nice change. Mia's settling in really well. All the storage in our kitchen for our, all that pots and stuff. Everything's just it's just really yeah, it's from where I, how I felt the first night. It's like just feels so nice to be here. Anyway, today we are. Going to the house, getting the last little bits, last little clean. I put it on the plants. <sighs> Doesn't that look nice, memes? Isn't that a nice sight? Got a little stick insect. Look at those little legs. <laughs> All done. Finally. Finally. Oh my god, finally. The end of an era, a not so great era. <laughs> I basically spend all day trying to move Mia's bed around so that she's laying in the sun. <laughs> and here's a little Maggie, a little sweetie pie on the hunt for some yummy worms. Ignore what's on the TV, but this is our TV finally mounted. This caused so many dramas, this damn TV. I don't know why it was so hard to mount, but we got it. How did you get up there, Means? How did you get up there? But yes, current situation. Okay, let's get into this. I was gonna do this in a separate video, but I just thought I'd get it out of the way because it wasn't really that exciting to watch back. But here's me putting all my clothes into my closet. I did try to organize them by like color, by style, by arm length. Uh, this is just all of my, you know, t-shirts and long sleeve tops. The next bit of footage will be all of my jumpers. <laughs> As you can see, kind of went through a cream phase. I don't know what my personal style is, but regardless, this just looks really nice. This is the entrance when you walk in. So I love that they are all the same color. That just satisfies a part of my brain. Um, and so, yeah, I try to keep that theme going basically in this one area. Like even the shoes down the bottom you'll see are all the same style, like my nicer shoes. 
up the top I ended up putting some heels that I never wear <laughs> I'm stoked um some heels that I never wear that are like designer uh that just fill out the space nicely so this like open section is basically just to make the entrance of the wardrobe look nice these are pant rails from uh, ikea pant rails I, I don't know what they're called but they're actually really handy and it's nice not having to have uh those like metal pant uh what are they called coat hangers what are they called clothes hangers i don't know um i ended up buying another one for that top you could see there was only two little little poles for that pant i can't even form a sentence anymore anyway i'm doing my puffer jackets and random kind of jumpers that aren't <laughs> cream and then i was filling out those drawers i had one drawer which was pants uh, pants that don't fit into the hanging area which are like my nicer pants and jeans uh, so it's looking so far those things on the ground no, no more of those which is nice little meme sun baking you haven't been able to lay in the sun since our first house memes i just opened up the makeshift <laughs> changing sides makeshift curtain so that she can see out and have a little bathe in the sun look at her reflection Stuff like this makes me so happy. Reese and I were both thinking, like, she's going to have areas that she can... Because in our first house, in the morning, we'd get this beautiful morning sun. And she would always bathe in it. But then our rental only had afternoon sun. And even then, I couldn't really leave the blinds open because all, all of my plants were in the windows. And didn't want them to sizzle because they're sensitive. So... It's been a while since she's been able to do this and it's just really nice to see. Now I am doing my Calvin Klein bras. I actually love that this side of the wardrobe has shallower drawers. So they're not 75, I think the other ones were. They are 35. So yeah, just easier to reach. I don't know. We just, the way we, we worked at this wardrobe area out, we are really proud of ourselves. It turned out basically perfectly like exactly how we wanted but all my sweatpants in here perfectly fits three pairs uh, and then some like little socks or a jumper at the end and what was I going to say about the hangers the pant hangers yeah so the top so you can see that the earlier footage I had two bottom ones that had my pants draping over them I bought this goes in there I bought another one of those with multiple little rods so that whole panel is just pants now. The top is skirts. The bottom two are pants and jeans. Now this drawer is my pajamas. The one above that, they are yeah like loose kind of beachy uh, linen-y pants. The ones that I don't wear as often or aren't as, as nice. And below this one is all of my active wear. Way more than I probably need, but I have done a clear out. It is just kind of hard to narrow it down, especially when what you have left, like all of this stuff, it's all like Lulu, it's stacks, it's all brands that I love. So I, um, I'll keep them there for a little while longer. If I don't find that I'm using them, then I can give them to somebody else or donate them or bin them depending on, you know, how, how worn the clothing is. But I was pretty happy with how that looks. It is like lots of tiny little cubes. So my Pilates socks in the back corner, sports bras. I had these over multiple drawers in the rental. So I'm glad that it all fits uh, into one. So that's how that looks. The pajamas, bit of a mix of stuff there. And then, yeah, you can see just like overalls, some jeans I don't wear as often. And then here are bathers. So those are all bikinis. These ones are all like one pieces and sun protection ones. And then I can't remember what the next... Oh, yeah, I was putting all my shoes away in these bottom things, which are really handy. And just one pair of heels that I was so close to throwing out. But I was like, you know what? If one of my friends gets married soon, which I'm sure someone will, then I'm sure they'll come in handy. And I'm just putting my slides, um, tuck, tucking them away nice and neatly, which is good. Again, I haven't really worn those in the past two years, but feels wrong <laughs> throwing them out. And then these are all my shoes that I wear all the time. And I just love that they are kind of like just different variations of the same thing. And then my nice little slides. And yeah, that's how it looks. I just wanted to keep it really nice and neat. And these are my pants. This has been kind of changed a little bit since filming this. This memes in there. <laughs> See, look how much nicer everything looks. And our fancy... Little bowls. Why is this quality so bad? Thank you. Oh gosh, the king of the table. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> it's 
He's too high. The, the bows. <laughs> it, well, that wasn't an, an immediate yes. So he's he's, he's on the fence. <laughs> We're winning him over. What are you doing? Oh, he's trying to find the one couch that doesn't. I mean, yeah. chair, one dining chair that isn't too hard on the bum. Because he reupholstered all of these, but we kept the um foam underneath because it's just easier. Reese has put the TV up in our bedroom. The brackets didn't fit the TV because apparently every single TV mount is cursed. But he, with his smart brain and his ingenuity and ingenuity, he figured it out. And it is now on the yeah, wall. And he's, it's got a little tilt to it. We bought a white... With all the contraptions to make it work. All the... Brackets that I've mounted together. <laughs> wow, he did an amazing job. There's so many bolts oh, for and stuff. a tiny TV. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we've got a, um, whoops, let me zoom out. It is a white mount, even though you can't see it anyway. Yeah, because of the way our room is, it's, um, there's not really anywhere else to put it. Because you can't put it up there because that's where our curtain track will be. Yeah. And we don't watch TV in bed a lot of the time, but it is nice to have it there. And um, this swivelly little mount thing is handy, so it's a cheap little TV we got on sale. So this is the remote. Look at all the little options you get. Disney Plus, YouTube, Amazon, Stan, KO. Fancy. Yeah, exactly like that. Stunning. Let's turn it on. You came about seeing the pathway? No. Oh, you moved that last one. Yeah, I couldn't, I can't reach it. Vita. Oh, it doesn't sound good off a screen, does it? Nice. Cute looks when you turn it off. The audio is lowers and then the little curtains close. That looks good there. Thank you so much. You did a great job. I think it looks good there. Let's... The least invasive. The least invasive? Yeah. Like, yeah. it's tucked away in the corner. It doesn't get in the way when you're walking out. You just have a chest of drawers or something if you want there rather than having something on the wall. Like, a big TV. Yeah. Then you've got this whopper. I'm going to put a rocky road for you. <laughs> These small stuff start with... I'll put them all on one side. All the TV stuff. Oh, I put all my DVDs away. Ooh, that's gonna be fun. More stunning sunsets. I know this is probably not very exciting for other people, but I just, it just brings me a sense of peace just watching this footage back. And then look at memes. Look. <laughs> oh my god, instant serotonin. So cute. Just watching some old, not an old video, it's a video from like <laughs> a week ago. Look at this beautiful spider web. It's massive. It would have been like 60 centimeters or something. This is kind of hard to see, but it's a little Western spine bill. Loving the grevilleas that I planted. It's so amazing watching all the birds go nuts over the, the nectar producing uh, flowers and little plants. Woohoo! I was getting so excited. This is my DVD collection, my horror movie collection. And. I honestly thought I would have so much more than I did. I knew I had a lot, but I thought I'd be filling up all the covers and I really only filled up this one side. So I'm there is method to my madness. So I have one section, which is kind of like, say, Friday the 13th, the whole series, and then Nightmare on Elm Street, the whole series. So one of those little shelves is series. One of them is like, but series that I love. I should specify. And then also other movies that I love, like The Ring 1 and 2, The Grudge, things like that. Then I've got another shelf somewhere in there that's series, you know, like Wrong Turn 1, 2, and 3, and those kinds of movies that I don't really actually enjoy. There was just a period where I'd go to JB Hi-Fi, and if I saw a horror movie DVD, I'd buy it, like even if I hadn't seen it before, even if I didn't like it, I just <laughs> kept buying them. Um, and then the rest of them were all just random, random movies. But... This was really frustrating for Reese because I didn't space the shelves uh, optimally and he knew he could fix it. So I had to go up to Perth for something. Um, and he said, when you go, I'll, 
I'll fix it all and I'll come back and it'll all be done. So he, yeah, he, um, I don't know if it's done here. I think he, is it done here? I'm, I'm not even sure, but yeah, he reorganized all the shelves so they're a little bit more even and blah, 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 blah. But it's so funny. You can see in front of the TV, I've got like Sex in the City, one, two, and three or something. And then SpongeBob, <laughs> like in amongst all of the death and gore, I've got like SpongeBob. Anyway, look at these stunning, this stunning, stunning sunrise. It's like purpley, pinky, orangey, yellow. I will never get over this. It's just like, oh my gosh, look at that. I haven't seen another one like this since I recorded this footage. It's just so beautiful. It's just so peaceful. So lucky to live here. I also love how this looks through the, wait a second, wait a second, there we go the sunrise coming through the fly screen and I brought the exposure down and it looks like sparkles, like glittery sparkles. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. We've put the water, the bird bath back. I was hoping, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. It's so exciting. This is the first time, I mean, this morning I saw a little bird drink from it. I just put a limestone rock in there so the little birds can drink better. Oh my god, please drink, that's so special. No, it's drink, oh. Oh, I'm so bummed it didn't drink, but at least it knows that it's there. What's, what's he up to? I've thrown out some bits of apple that, um, we're not going to eat because there's, there's so many 28 parrots around and I love the apple. So he didn't seem too interested in it though. There's a bit of apple. Ah, so predictable in the best, most cutest way possible. Yes. They're fresh enough apples. It's just that Reese didn't like this variety. And I don't really eat apples. Oh my god, so cute. I wonder if he's gonna tell all his friends or her friends. Oh, oh I lost interest. Interesting, interesting. Let's see what else is around. Feel free to fast forward through this. It goes for about a minute. It's basically just me recording the beautiful little birds at my mum's house. I had to fast forward it because I don't think it would be interesting enough for most people <laughs> at the normal length, but the next two clips are normal speed. I mean, yeah, they're silver eyes, there's a gray fan tail, the way she set up everything is just so cute, like that little bit that you can see the bird on now, it's like a rock, I think, and then it has a netting over the top so they can grip onto it. So some of them, you know, <laughs> oh my God, it's just so cute. And then they fly up onto that little bamboo twig that she's nestled between, oh my God, it's so cute nestled between these trees. She gives them little like oranges sometimes because um, there's like nectar feeding birds in amongst these birds, different. It's just, ugh, it's just such a beautiful little diverse ecosystem. Oh my God, look at the little gray fan tail. They're so cute. They've come out of nowhere, even at our house now. Like we've, everyone knows willy wagtails, but these grand gray fan tails, I swear I've never seen them before. And now I see them all the time. It's so strange, but I love it. Okay, here is how the DVDs turned out after Reese organized them all. So at the top, we've got like the Friday the 13th, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. These, I think my most watched movie of all time is the original Friday the 13th. It's just, I don't know why I love, love that movie so much. Then we've got The Grudge, The Ring, love those. Below this, I've got other movies that I absolutely love, like Urban Legends, Scream, Final Destination, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, what else, Blair Witch Project, uh, Room 1408. These are other movies that I love. House of Wax, Insidious, Frozen, Cabin in the Woods, uh, Dawn of the Dead, uh, Evil Dead. Oh my God. These are the ones that are in series. Just, oh, I'm so excited to watch these again. I'm so excited. And then the ones at the bottom, ones that I'm less less into but you know what they're still good enough <laughs> so hello it's the of course the lighting's gonna change i'm watching tv i'm being illuminated by the television but it is the 26th of may i actually just had to check before i recorded this i have been filming so much footage over the last few weeks while we've been moving and i think i'm just gonna mash all of this together in a in like a life of laws vlog 
Um, so yeah, this video is like spanning a month, basically. What's been happening <laughs> recently? Recently. So I went to Perth on Sunday, last Sunday, for a friend's birthday lunch. We stayed home, just chilling. I was going to stay in Perth because the next day, I believe, or was it, was it the next day? Yeah, the next day, we uh, had to come back to Perth because Reese had a doctor's appointment. He had to get an MRI and then he had an, an appointment with his gastroenterologist. So that was over two days, Monday and Tuesday. I would decided to come home because uh, Reese had to work on Monday so I could be home all day Monday, get work done and then come back with him, take one car. I mean, I made an extra whole trip for myself, but it's just what I like to do. I like sleeping in my own bed. We got to the appointment and the first thing his gastroenterologist said is, have you lost weight? And this is basically the first thing that anyone that has seen Reese in the past few weeks has said. He's lost like probably seven kilos in the space of a month and a bit, maybe two months, which is really significant. And so they got talking. His results, like his liver and his bowels, the ones that had the issues, are like better than ever. So that was like an amazing um, result. I literally thought it was from – long story short, I had an inkling that it was going to be the opposite. But to hear her say there's no active inflammation, your liver tests are doing like literally the best they've been, it was so amazing. Like that's what you want to hear when you have someone in your life that has uh, an immuno – an autoimmune disease. So anyway, she's like, no, but we need to get on top of this this sickness. So recently, the past few weeks, like four weeks, uh, maybe even six weeks. No, it's probably been six weeks. Um, he has – it's been getting progressively worse. And if you are with a man, you'll know that it's almost impossible to get them to go to the doctors. He finally went to the doctor. I'm getting ahead of myself. His symptoms are, it's kind of like a COVID cough where, you know, if you had COVID and then after you've had, like all the symptoms have gone, you try and speak, but there's this like pressure in your chest that forces air out of you and you've got a cough. There's nothing to cough up, but it's just the pressure forces you to cough. It's been that, but it mainly opened, only happened at nighttime and it wasn't very bad at the start. The main thing was you got really bad night sweats every single night without fail. The bed is like saturated. Those were the main two things. So like on their own, it's not crazy alarming, right? I went to the doctor. She said, it's asthma. <laughs> Can I say that every single time Reese has gone to a doctor, none of them ask a single question about his history. And you think, oh, Reese should say that. But why would the patient tell the doctor the information that they should be like, the doctor would know the right questions to ask. Why would Reese say to him, you haven't asked me what's wrong with like my other, like anyway, whatever. It's just, especially with men and they're not very forthcoming with stuff like that. They're not going to be like, hey, I've got this, 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 this. He's been to doctors recently. And they've ugh, Both times, both of the major times, they've misdiagnosed him and he's been seriously ill afterwards. <sighs> anyway, so they gave him like a steroid asthma puffer thing and that didn't really do anything because it's not asthma <laughs> anyway I mentioned all this to his gastroenterologist and she was concerned she did some ran some tests um how do I summarize this story there's so much to it his red his white blood cell count is really low and he's like this infection or something counter is really high like there's something going on with his body his blood tests are showing it but it's just a matter of figuring out what it is. His MRI was clear. He had two chest x-rays. They were clear. At the time of filming this, he just had a CT scan today. Don't know the results yet. Um, what else? He's had a, like probably like 20 vials of, vials of blood taken at this point. On Sunday, his gastroenterologist told him that he needs to go to emergency and he's going to try and she's going to try and get him a bed um, in, in emergency. Keep in mind, we live three hours away from... The hospital so we need to know like what's happening ahead of time reese has got work on wednesday thursday friday <laughs> so we had to cancel basically that entire week of work and 
on what day was it? Wednesday. We we're meant to get all of his tests done. He had to get a get a COVID test randomly. Um, and that took the entire day to get the results to the point where we were driving home at 5 p.m. and he got a text saying, your results are negative. So it's like a uh, waste of a day, but it's so hard to complain because it's a free system. And like throughout this whole journey, I've just been so grateful to live in Australia. It's easy to complain when things take a long time or it's just easy to complain in, in any situation, right? But if you look at things from a bigger perspective, like he's got this incredible specialist that is always in his corner. Like one of the, he just has the best team of people around him and he doesn't pay for any of it. Like just all, all, oh my God, it's so amazing to live in Australia. Oh, the healthcare. I mean, Jesus. Anyway, so then we got home and they basically said like you could get a bed at any moment. So be prepared to leave at any moment. Three hours drive. <laughs> Okay, we had to get home because we didn't pack enough medication for Mia. Reese's medication wasn't ad adequately packed. I hadn't brought any like other clothing. I needed new underwear. I needed like just clothes. I mean, the underwear and clothes is fine. I can re-wear stuff. I can buy new stuff. But like the Mia's pills, she can't go a certain amount of days without them. Anyway, got to the morning and Reese texted them. This nurse that he was lucky enough to have the number of. Number f number of number four whatever, <laughs> and um said so like uh what's what's the situation? Cause do we just drive up and hope that he gets a bed? But anyway, so he got a text from the nurse, and ugh, long story short, had a call with her. They basically said there's no chance you're going to get a bed, um pre-book you're not going to be able to pre-book a bed there's just too much going on in the hospital everyone's overwhelmed you have to admit yourself um as an outpatient because before he would be an inpatient admit yourself as an outpatient go to emergency you're going to be waiting a while because of the nature of emergency bring a book then you'll become an inpatient and then you'll be in the queue to get a bed so this was i decided to stay home because i had already put off like a lot of important time sensitive work that I actually couldn't delay any longer. We both knew that that day was going to be a nothing day and he would just be waiting in emergency and like I might as well be at home getting all my work done that I'd been neglecting that was really time sensitive and then I would just drive up and see him thinking that maybe he would get released the next day. Uh no, so he did get a bed eventually. So tonight is the second night he's been in the emergency. Well now he's gotten, now he's in a ward. Um getting all these tests done. He's had the infectious disease team come. They've asked him all his questions, even like, have you been around birds? <laughs> like his gastroenterologist briefed all the resident doctors there. They thought it might be glandular fever because that was coming up in his bloods, but they're now thinking it's not that. So it might be something with his bone marrow um, or what else do they say? Or his, well, the medication he takes, his immunosuppressing medication. It could be that that's causing side effects. So at this point, we have no idea what's happening. I'm going to drive up tomorrow morning and be able to spend the day with him. God, it's been, I just hate being away from him, first of all. This house on its own, like I always said to Reese, like, oh my God, imagine if you ever have to be here on your own, like if, if I'm traveling, like how scary. And I'm the one that's been here alone twice. It's so scary because we don't have any blinds. I'm sitting in a little corner with like sheets on the windows because out there, out there there's no blinds and it's scary and no i don't think anyone's out there but you just not be able to see them freaks me out during the day it's a it's an oasis at night time no thanks <laughs> last night i was so scared that i locked myself in the bedroom in there where my finger is and um put the tv on because at least there's like double sheets hanging off those windows and then i slept with the TV on and the brightness all the way down so that it wasn't too bright and then a sleep mask over my eyes which doesn't make any sense but it's just the noise the flashing I don't know I don't know it just made me feel a little bit safer oh man this is just never take your health for granted hey meanwhile he's continuing to lose weight he's continuing to have a fever the fever's now coming into the daytime his cough's getting worse now it's like a burning pain in his chest <sighs> Constant pain. It's just so scary. Like, what the hell? What is it? What is it? 
And when you find out, how do you treat it? It was almost nice yesterday to have a potential cause, which was glandular fever. But we Googled it like separately and none of his symptoms, like a couple of them made sense, but most of them didn't. So I don't know. How come I haven't gotten sick? Because it's called the kissing disease. It's spread by saliva. We kiss all the time. I haven't been sick. Obviously, he's immunocompromised, but it's not like my immune system's so strong that I wouldn't catch glandular fever. Anyway, it's just wild. So this is just an update. I haven't been posting on socials. I haven't done anything. I've, I mean, I've been doing stuff that I've got to do, but like the bare bones, and I just can't focus. And I just hate being away from him. So anyway, I just got to update. 12 minutes. Wow, it's a long winch. Hopefully we get some answers. He said that he'll probably have to be there for at least a few more days because, you know, nothing apparently happens over the weekend at the hospital. He's texting me now, so I better go and read those messages. But, yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed it is nothing serious, even though it kind of feels like it already is. And he mends ASAP. <laughs> yeah. Puffy eyes from crying. Still in the same outfit. As I was whenever I recorded that last video. I don't even know what day it is. Reese has been in the hospital now for a week. Today's Thursday. A week. It's been the worst, the hardest emotion emotionally what? The hardest week of my life emotionally. Yesterday was the worst day, as you can see. Basically, first of all, thank you so much to the Australian healthcare system. It may not be perfect, but, like, I can't imagine how much all of this would have cost if it was pri if he had to pay for it all. He has had specialists from every single area run every single test. He's had MRIs, CT scans echocardiograms he just had a PET scan yesterday um, an infinite amount of blood tests he's probably gonna have a bone marrow biopsy a liver biopsy yesterday was the worst day because at one point we thought it might be like blood cancer because all the symptoms were identical to his and that was bad enough but then his gastroenterologist came in, he was lovely, and she said that she got a concerning call the day before yesterday from the haematology professor saying that there could be a an incredibly, incredibly rare form of lymphoma where none of the usual signs of lymphoma are detectable, like they don't have the usual, usual signs, like the lymph nodes aren't um, swollen. And it's usually only the people that are on his immunosuppressing drug that get it. And the funny thing is, it's not funny, but it's just if you don't love, you'll cry. The drug he was taking before his immunosuppressing drug, he was the only person to have an adverse reaction to it. To the point where they actually included him in medical literature anonymously um, because he was the first person to have that reaction so it's like lucky him so the whole rare thing means nothing because at this point it could happen to Reese. so he went off to get his PET scan which detects cancers and I was holding on by a thread and as soon as he left I I had to leave the hospital. I had nowhere to go, but I had to leave the hospital and I was just like crying behind my glasses. And I just started, I just found a place to park and I just started hyperventilating crying because I started Googling it, which is the worst thing you can do. And it sounded like it was really aggressive. And the cases that I read, the people died. And I just, I wouldn't better talk about this now had I, had it not been for the rest of the story. He came back in and, um, I sort of bawling my eyes out when I saw him again because I missed him so much we were like we are like this 
normally. But I feel like I need to break my fingers to show you how tight we are now. <laughs> you, something about this experience brings you like even closer together than... <sighs> anyway. Um, anyway, so he's allowed to leave his room every once in a while just to get some fresh air. So we did that and then came back and this gastroenterologist came back in and said that they got the results back and she isn't allowed to diagnose anything because it's not her, you know, she doesn't want to overstep. But there wasn't really as much there to be concerned about or like what they were looking for wasn't there or something, which was a good thing, obviously, just the only reason I can talk about it now. Um, but he just texted me this morning, or he did. I was hoping the haematology department would come back last night while I was there. Because I've been spending all day with him. Um, but they didn't. But they came this morning and they said that the lymph nodes were all clear. So there's no cancer in there. Um, but the bone marrow was lit up a bit. Which means that there could be something going on there. Which is why they need to do the biopsies. It's just the worst week of our lives. We have so many incredibly big changes to make when we get home. Like, we already live a pretty positive lifestyle, but... You truly cannot... Understand. Like, we... <laughs> nothing... Nothing prepares you for being in this situation mentally, like... It just gives you a whole new perspective. Like, Reese really needs to leave his job because this is so bad on his body. There are so many symptoms that he's had that he's just ignored because, oh, it's just from work. Oh, I'm just sore from work. There's so many things that could have been detected earlier if he didn't brush them off. And working a physical job is just so hard on the body and he's been working too much. I run out of clothes, I'm just wearing the same clothes every day. I'm washing my undies and stuff, obviously, but mum has been an angel throughout this process. She's been just doing so much, taking care of memes as if she's like a little baby, because memes are so anxious, obviously. <sighs> she's just been a godsend. Anyway, I don't know why I'm recording this, I might not even upload it, but it's almost like a visual diary. I'm just laughing at the fact that I look like this and I've got my lips done, like... <laughs> Because every single time, every like two days, we think, oh, maybe the, the third day we'll leave. And it just keeps getting extended. So I keep booking things, thinking like, oh, we might be out by then. And it's just, you know, it hasn't been discharged because I haven't found anything. Like they've had the infectious diseases team come out. They've run like every single test. They all came back negative. It's just so weird. All these heart scans, totally fine. Thank God. Anyway, we shall see. Video diary. <clears throat> <clears throat> First time driving in a while. First time driving, old girl. She's been sat at this in this spot, and it's Making been. Sure there's no security guards walking past. <laughs> it's court. been sad because I've been every time I've been leaving the hospital, I've been seeing your car there, and some of those really bad nights that I left, really scary days. Seeing your car, it was just, just sad. So it's just nice to have a little day trip, a little excursion. I guess I'm due for an update. Talking quietly because. My mum is still asleep. We're in June now, apparently. I'm gonna have to move this closer so you can hear me. Um, still waiting for the, those results. Should be in the next few days. The past two days, yesterday was a bit of a mess, but the day before that, he was allowed to leave the hospital for the day. 
So we just did normal things that everyone takes for granted, including us, like going and getting a coffee or a chai latte for us, um, going to Ikea, going to a furniture shop. We bought a rug. <laughs> like, just a sense of normality. It was so nice. And then yesterday we wanted to do the same thing, but plans kind of got stuffed up and it was like torrential downpour. So it is what it is, but hopefully we'll get to lead again today. The hepatology team have taken over his case from gastroenterology, but his gastroenterologist is an angel and I feel like she's still going to want to be really closely involved in everything. But the head doctor for hepatology, which is of course like the liver and stuff like that, is really like nonchalant and he kind of reckons Reese could leave, like be discharged today but the gastroenterologist said that she would speak to Reese on Tuesday which is tomorrow and Reese hasn't even been taken off antibiotics yet just to see how he responds so he kind of wants to stay like an extra night and I think he should and he can if he wants to I mean he hasn't been discharged yet or told he can but yeah the hepatologist seems really like unfazed by it all which is a good thing in one way but then also kind of concerning in another yeah it's been the worst week of my life easily and oh, I've never experienced so many emotions so so fast. It's brought us so much closer together. Like, who would have thought that was even possible with how close we already are? It's also made us, yeah, just so grateful for the simplest, simplest things. Like I've said to him, I can't imagine you sleeping next to me. Like that's going to be the most real feeling. We're in better spirits because we kind of have to be. It's like... Stressing doesn't change the outcome. Reese said he saw a quote that was like something like stress doesn't help tomorrow, it just ruins today. Or something like that. And it's true. Stressing and being sad and dwelling and moping, it just ruins the present moment. And it doesn't achieve any, you know, um helpful outcome, beneficial outcome. So I mean of course you've got to cry and you've got to have those bad days and we've, we've had those but at some point you got to pick yourself up and move forward so this video is going to be like an hour long but I don't care it is what it is it's just like a really honest look into my life I haven't posted on social media for like two weeks lounge face is meant to be launching the new collection brows and the rebrand this week maybe it's just it's just funny how life works, isn't it? You think you have control, but you don't. You just gotta try and move with the flow. I keep trying to remind myself that everything happens the way it's meant to and it will all make sense in the end. Whether or not that's true, I don't know, but I'm choosing to believe that it's true because it gives me something to hold on to. <laughs> Similar to people that are religious, you know? I understand that side of religion, it's like, you know, believing in something bigger than you makes your own problems seem less scary. Anyway, friends, I probably won't finish this video until Reese is out of the hospital and we're back home. And it's a 360 video because it started out footage of us leaving the rental, moving into the new house, and now I've basically moved into my mum's house. It's like we left one limbo period and entered an even worse one. <laughs> God, life, huh? Anyway, I wanted to upload this because, as I said, it's just my life at the moment. I'm sure many of you guys have gone through something similar. It's not all rainbows and lollipops, and that's okay. Reese just texted me and said that he's able to leave today. Oh my god. So surreal. I can't believe it. It feels so weird. But the hepatologist spoke to his gastroenterologist and she gave the all clear, which is what Reese was waiting for. So he'll be coming home today. Oh my god. Dad's having memes? You haven't realised yet? I've just had to wake you up from a nap. He's right outside, but you don't even know that. I took him, I took her to see him yesterday. And you should have seen how excited she was. They were just in the car. Because we're at the hospital, we won't let her bring her in, obviously. But first time seeing him in like 10 days. Oh, she can hear his car. 
She was losing her mind. She has not been away from him for that long. <laughs> Here we go. You're in deep sleep a second ago, Memes. <laughs> you gotta breathe, Memes. <laughs> this was so cute. She just did not want to leave his side. So this is the one bit of footage, and then later on, it's in a different outfit, and she's still there, tongue hanging out. Just sweet girl. So today we are driving up to Perth for the day. Reese has to get an MRI on his pelvis area because he has really sore hips. I always thought it was from work. It's a high chance it maybe just be from work, but the doctors just want to make sure that there is anything there. So just an MRI will be up and down the same day. Yeah, we don't find out the results of Reese's biopsy until next uh, next week. So. It's a really painful week of waiting and trying to distract ourselves. Can't wait to find out. Said to Reese though, I don't want to be, I don't, I don't know if I can even be in the room when he gets the call because if it's good news, great. But if it's not, then I don't know. I just can't let my brain hear that. But it's going to be good news. It's going to be good news. It's going to be good news. I was saying to Reese, I'm so glad we are moving in to this house in winter because it's just so cozy. But I take back that statement. I wish we were moving in in spring because... It's really depressing. I think it's also just a time of like this life at the moment doesn't really help, but just being cold, at least if it was like spring or summer, you'd be warm at night and stuff. Oh, bless you. Speak to you later. What's the time? Oh, I don't know. One, maybe? One and quarter past one? <clears throat> Miserable day in Perth. I used to say that I loved the rain. I no longer love the rain. And of course, someone parks next to me rude that i don't have the confidence to do this publicly somehow that's their fault and they're being rude um anyway yeah what i was just saying i used to love winter and stuff when i was younger yes i've left but uh not feeling it at the moment not feeling it as i'm getting older i'm scared of thunder and lightning used to love that i think the weather at the moment is being gloomy it doesn't help my mental health with everything going on um we don't have blinds and stuff we just inquired about a fireplace fireplaces are so expensive the only one we like is a cast iron one oh, such expensive taste <laughs> um anyway this video is gonna be like two hours long but i don't want to make it into two videos i want to get this video out i'm not going to upload it until we find out the news um next week but it is probably going to be like an hour and a half a feature film a depressing feature film. So yeah, I'm just in a McDonald's drive through car park. A McDonald's car park. I've got my Diet Coke, had some chippies. And I'm waiting till Reese is done, basically. Just a little update. Memes is being the amazing girl that she always is. Hopefully Reese's MRI goes well. He doesn't like them because they really like... He's not claustrophobic, but he doesn't have claustrophobia. Claustrophobic? But uh, they're not very, not very nice because you have to stay still for like 30 minutes and you're not allowed to like, if you, if you get a scratch, I mean, you are allowed to scratch it, but you know, it's kind of better if you don't. So always make sure he like shaves beforehand in case he gets itchy because you have to lay there and it's like a really tight little tube. You have to do certain breathing exercises. <clears throat> so crazy. The other day, the first night we got back, I think, I was already on like a nice edge in terms of my emotions, but I read a really bad article it wasn't an article it was like a scientific paper about this thing that reese might have um a really rare form of like a liver spleen lymphoma type thing and i it was said it was really aggressive and i that's when i lost my mind and that's what we're waiting on for the liver biopsy this is why it's like the worst possible thing to it's such it's so intense so scary <sighs> um anyway then reese read another one of those papers this one was 
so much worse. Mine said that a patient was diagnosed and one and he, and he died like a few weeks later. He read that 28 people were diagnosed and only one survived. So he's reading this to me. I don't know why I'm not blowing my eyes out right now. I think I'm just... Yeah. Um. So I lost my mind again and I started crying and I just said like, it's so scary to love someone so much. And then I have... Ooh, now my throat's getting all checked up. Yeah. Anyway, um, I said to him, like, this has been, you know, when you hear people say, oh, like, I went through something really horrible and, like, it changed my outlook on life. And unless you've experienced that, you kind of, you hear that and you're like, that's nice. But in the back, it doesn't, like, it doesn't stir up any kind of emotions. You, you, you're not like, oh, my God, I imagine, like, of course it would. Like, that's so inspirational. You, you're kind of like, oh, like, good for them. I'm glad, like, you know, I'm glad they have taken a positive out of that situation. It's not until you're in this situation, and I'm not even the, 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 the patient, obviously. It's like, it's not until you're in this situation where you're dealing with, like, really serious diagnoses, diagnoses, that um, I understand every single part of that. Like, the thought of living a long and happy life with Reese is, like, I could give everything else up. Nope, I'm trying to... Try to uh, my voice is getting shaky. Um, yeah. It really has changed my perspective. So I'm hoping that this is... It's been... Yeah, anyway. Anyway, I'm going to go. But we'll see what happens. That was my little update for now. <clears throat> I just had a meeting... And I came in back into the room and um, we said that he's got some semi good news that his specialist just called him. And they said that early findings, that they couldn't find any lymphoma in the liver biopsy. <sighs> My beautiful boy. driving home and got a call from Reese's specialist, an angel on this earth. The formal report for the biopsy still hasn't been received. So the liver specialist said that he's not concerned about it being um, any lymphoma, which is, yeah, obviously I had that reaction earlier this, this morning. Even when we were talking, that whole, whole phone call felt like the blood had sunken from my body. And I felt like, I don't know how you obviously feel hearing it about yourself, but Jesus. This morning she said that Reese will go back on his normal immunosuppressing medication for his other autoimmune diseases. But she was called to say that she spoke to the immunologists and they think it might be drug-induced lupus. So that means that he needs to stop his auto immunosuppressing medication. But the good thing is, is that the last appointment we had, which is before he was admitted to hospital, his autoimmune disease is basically, it's in like a deep remission. So it's the perfect time if you're going to change medication, which isn't ideal, obviously, if something's been working and his has been working, to try something new. And she said within the last, I don't know how many, what time frame? Last month. Last month, three new medications have come out for his, his ulcerative colitis. That's one that's... Three medications have gone into the PBS. Uh, three medications have gone onto the PBS, so the public system, for ulcerative colitis, which is what Reese has and that means that and, and one of them is really successful but she said she's got a lot of homework to do because um he's also got primary sclerosing cholangitis which is a liver disease so while those results are really good for people with ulcerative colitis doesn't necessarily mean they're going to fit for him with his other conditions so but oh, my god reese was saying that he was worried that because she wasn't going to call back until next week so he was worried that it was going to be something bad like oh you know i would j jump to the gun i said there were no cancer cells in the biopsy but there were <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i was fist pumping in the car <sighs> that is what it feels like that is what it fe literally feels like i can let go of that breath that, I, that i've been holding feel i was so nervous to edit this video because i didn't know i've been editing it as we've been going and i've been so scared that it's going to end badly and now that i'm it's, it's still obviously not great you know it's not like it's it's absolutely nothing wrong here nothing to see here 
um, it's a whole lot better than I thought it was going to be. And oh my god, I just feel like <sighs> I've just come outside. I'm sitting down. I probably shouldn't be sitting down because it's sand is wet but I've just been editing this footage and I kind of because it was all filmed on the spot I didn't really get a proper chance to explain like other stuff that wasn't very pertinent to the situation it's just started raining so we'll see how long I last out here the first night we got back here and even when I had to drive up no drive down from Perth to this house to pick up supplies and stuff. I just didn't want to be here. I got the weirdest vibes from this house. It's, it was scary, it was cold. If Reese isn't here with me, it doesn't feel like home. Like anywhere Reese is, is home for me. And he feels the same way. So when I, the fact that I was staying here on my own was really scary for me. <laughs> I know it makes me sound like a child, but it's a big house, it's isolated. Um, there's no blinds, it was just really not, an enjoyable time for me knowing that Reese was in hospital and I wasn't there with him and then having to drive you know six hours basically so from like seven hours really in total to come back here to get more stuff like having to pack all these clothes for Reese for me it was just the weirdest time ever I just wanted to get back to him as soon as possible and then the first night that we came back here it's like I I just didn't I, I literally said to Reese like <laughs> I would have he could have talked me into selling it selling the house like then and there like I had no emotional connection to it if anything I felt like kind of negative towards it and the first night we were back yes it stopped raining he we were watching trying to watch tv shows because when he read that article about 28 people being diagnosed and 27 dying and this was a disease that was common most common in young people by the way it was the thought and you know what it was? It was the thought of living here without Reese, Because that's what that goes through your mind. I started picturing my future, which is the most horrible thing ever, but that's where your mind goes when you're terrified without him in it. And he is like, when, when pe people say like other half, I don't really agree with that because I am whole on my own, he is whole on his own, but we just so perfectly complement each other. He is truly like the most, I just love that man more than life itself. I cannot imagine, oh, it's making me emotional thinking about it. <sighs> The thought of not having him in my life, the thought of living in this house without him, all these things that we had planned to do together, together flash before my eyes, like I was thinking like, I don't even want to make plans in the future. Like, I don't want to talk about doing stupid things like getting blinds or decking or grass or landscaping or like we wanted to start co cooking more. I didn't want to talk about any of that because I was so scared that he wasn't going to be around to do it because this type of cancer was so aggressive that it literally like it takes people within like weeks, months. I was thinking to myself, I will never find another <laughs> I will never find another man like him. He's inside right now, hopefully he can't see me. <laughs> I just love him so much. Which is why this has been so hard. And it's not until we got that call saying that it doesn't seem to be that lymphoma. It's not that lymphoma, um, but I love his house again. It literally came and went. Oh my God, it's raining a lot. It's not until I got that call that I was like, my, my view on this house completely changed. And I was so excited to be here again and making plans and went to Coles and bought lots of food to make all our meals and we were organizing, trying to organize blinds and this and that. It's just because like, <laughs> he's making a tea. Um, even that was depressing. Like seeing his because he makes like a million teas per day seeing all the tea stuff here without him here literally just everything made me so sad but yeah i'm so excited to get to do all that stuff and it's just like when you get that close to something scary happening the true the things that are important to you in your life just are like they have a spotlight on them 
and everything else just fades into nothingness and none of it matters and like truly when i said before i want nothing more in this entire lifetime than to live a long and happy life with him that's all i want and i'm really good at prioritizing things that make me happy i'm really proud of myself i've always done that throughout my entire life which i believe is where allowed me to be where i am today um and this is just a reminder to stay on that path he's watching me <laughs> he's in there <laughs> barking from outside the house you're the intruder man i just think that even lounge face like there's so much that i could be stressed about right now because so much is behind um it's just it's just a lot you know but i just you know i think if i delay the if i delay the launch one more week what's like there there are things that will go wrong that or there will be extra costs and things like that but when you're in the situation it's just it's all so trivial it is all so trivial you have nothing if you don't have your health and your loved ones. That's all that matters. Like, Reese has been so busy with work, which is great financially, but, like, everything else has been sacrificed in order to prioritise that, and it's just not worth it. I was going to do some, like, cute little footage of Reese and I at the end of this video, but I don't think I'm going to because not everything gets wrapped up in a nice little perfect bow, and... We don't really have a proper diagnosis yet. Um, it could be the lupus. It could even be a different type of um, infection that they... Are you right? Mia? What are you doing? It could be a different kind of infection. Like, there's just... It hasn't been... Nothing's been... <laughs> Come here. Nothing's been... What are you doing? Nothing has actually been diagnosed yet, so this story is ongoing. So it isn't all, you know, nothing, not everything in life gets wrapped up in a nice little bow. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. It's been a long one. Hard to watch back, especially watching the start of the footage when you just don't know. Like, Reese was sick in all of that footage, but you just, it's just really eerie watching that and not knowing what was coming. Thank you for your support, for all your messages. I only posted on Instagram for the first time a couple of days ago, just two stories saying that Reese has been sick and just had an outpouring of love um, from everyone. And just a reminder, just a nice little, this is how I'm gonna end the video. Do not take life for granted. Do not take your health for granted. Do not take your loved ones for granted. <sighs> Tell the people that you love that you love them. Hug the people that you wanna hug. Don't lose sight of what's important in life. Be grateful for the things you have to be grateful for. The past has already happened. The future hasn't happened yet. Literally all you have is this moment. I know that's so cliche. But spend these moments doing things that make you happy. Things that make you feel good about yourself and your life. That's all that life is. <laughs> I know this is so deep and for what? That is what life is all about. Just love. And being in the moment surrounded by people that make you feel good. And helping other people feel good. Thanks for watching guys. Back with my beautiful little family.